Hey guys, today we're bringing another non-native HomeKit product into HomeKit called SwitchBot. Let's jump into the video. Welcome back friends. If this is your first time here, my name is Eric. If you're into smart homes, home automation, and especially HomeKit, you're definitely in the right place. Today's video is a part of my Hoobs series. If you don't know what Hoobs is, it is a simple little device that brings non-native HomeKit products into HomeKit. For full disclosure, SwitchBot did send these out to me for a full honest review, but that's not gonna sway my opinion in one way or another. If I don't like something, I'm definitely gonna let you know. I'm also doing a giveaway in this video, so definitely stay tuned. So the SwitchBot comes in two different colors, black or white, and they are little tiny Bluetooth devices that can connect directly to your phone via Bluetooth 4.1, or you can actually connect it to the web if you buy the SwitchBot Mini Hub. I think they are also have a bigger hub that looks like cloud. I'm not quite sure what the difference is, um, but the mini hub is a little bit cheaper and I think that's pretty much all you need. When it comes to the actual device, these things are pretty simple. All it is is a little tiny box with a finger that comes out and pushes the button of the device that you want to trigger. The places where you can put these things is endless. It's really only limited by your imagination. Some of the places that you can put these are on your coffee machines, microwaves, ovens, baby sound machines, thermostats, TVs, the list goes on and on. It does come with a CR2 battery, which they mentioned should last about 600 days. I'll be updating my full pros and cons list on my website with my own personal battery life. So if you wanna get an update on that, definitely check out the link down below. When it came to installing these, these things are really simple and easy to install. You just want to expose the 3M adhesive on the back and just place this onto the device. Now you do wanna line this up perfectly with the button. Now these things are not the smallest things. They are not the best looking things. I do wish it was a little bit smaller. I found a couple places I really wanted to put these, but because there's other buttons in the way or other things, I couldn't do it. You do have to have enough of the double-sided tape on the device, so if things are in the way, it's just not gonna work. So if they could just make it a little bit smaller, you can really get more uses out of it. Now I did find the double-sided adhesive to be very strong. Once you put this on there, it's not gonna come off unless you prying it off. Now I did <laughs> pry it off because I wanted to get multiple shots and um, once you pull it off, it's not sticky that much anymore. It's not gonna work on a second location. They do include a second um, double-sided adhesive so you can get at least one more time and they also sell online where you can buy more of these. Um, they include two little attachments for the paddle switches. You can get more of these online also. If you do want to use these with any of your assistants, you definitely have to pick up one of the mini hubs. This will allow it to connect to Lady A, Google, IFTT, Siri shortcuts, smart things, and now I'm gonna show you how I got it into HomeKit. To do this, you will need Hoobs, which stands for HomeBridge out of the box. Hoobs is the easiest way to do HomeBridge, as far as I know. You can get your own Raspberry Pi and do HomeBridge and do your own thing if you're more advanced but I think having hoops is definitely the easiest way I did a full review and install of hoops so if you want to see that video definitely check that out once you have hoops up and running there is two different ways that you can get your switch bot into home kit one is through IFTTT which my friend Shane Watley he did a video on this procedure which is a great video so if you want to check out his video and you want to use IFTT definitely check out that video right Right there. Recently though, IFTT announced they're gonna start charging monthly service charges to their users, which I think is just hilarious. This bait and switch stuff happens all the time and I think it's just ridiculous. I'm not big on service charges, especially if they're monthly, <laughs> ongoing. I'm not gonna get into drama, but in a nutshell, if you're locking in now, it's gonna be 199 per month. I'm not big on any type of monthly service charges, so if there's a way that I can get around it and have a one-time charge and be done with with it, uh, that's what I'm all about. So I did find another way and that is using smart things. The great thing about using smart things and hoops is that you buy the hub and you can use this with many other 
smart home products. Recently, I did a whole house water shutoff valve that is now exposed to my home kit, and that is through smart things and hoobs. If you haven't seen that video, definitely gotta check that out. It is something you want in your smart house. So I'm all for having a smart things hub, even though I've said many, many times over the years that I hate hubs. I don't think they should exist. They should be banned. But then again, I have more hubs than most people, but also I review a lot of products. I do dream of a day that we will be hubless or at least just one hub or one router. That's all that's really needed in your house. You should have one device and be done. I know that day is coming. I'll jump off my soapbox now and let's go ahead and jump into hoops and set up smart things. It actually took me about 25 to 30 minutes to set this up through smart things and through hoops. Um, even that is quite easy. There are instructions on the hoops website that is step by step. I'm not going to go into details here it's simply because the instructions are quite detailed uh, but there are a lot of different steps that you do have to go through. You just need to follow those steps and you'll have no problem whatsoever. Once you got hoops and smart things set up all you need to do to bring these devices in the home kit is to go back into smart things go into your smart apps go into Homebridge and then select which smart things devices you want to bring into HomeKit. Once you completed that, go into HomeKit, go into your default room and you'll see your device. Go ahead and put this into the proper room and give it a try. Now, depending on what you're using your SwitchBot on, you might have to put it in different modes or you might have to hold down the button longer. To do that, you will have to download the SwitchBot app. Mainly, this is gonna be used for selecting what type of mode you're on or for custom settings. Once you change those settings, those will automatically be stored in your device. And once you activate this with HomeKit or SmartThings, it's gonna act the way that you set originally set this up. The only minor issue I had was when I installed this on a Lutron electronic dimmer switch. Even on the lowest setting, which is zero seconds, I did find that it held the switch too long and it actually would dim it instead of actually shut it off. So that's just my particular case and my particular switch. But if you're gonna use this on a normal power switch, which you won't have any issues whatsoever. But other than that, I did find these to be very useful. You can put these things anywhere, especially if you live in apartment buildings or if you don't want to do electrical work, you can throw these onto normal power switches. I do wish they were a little bit smaller just because I know I have an imagination that can really throw this in a lot of different things, but unfortunately, because of the size, it is a little bit limited. So I would like to see the next version that is a little bit smaller, that would really be cool. Other than that, I think these things are awesome. I am gonna be doing a giveaway sponsored by SwitchBot. I'm gonna be giving away two SwitchBots, one black, one white, and one mini hub to two lucky winners. One on Instagram and one on Twitter. For full details and rules on how to enter, definitely check out the description down below. SwitchBot also has a couple other products. One they sent over is a temperature and humidity sensor, which I'm happy to report that you can get this in the home kit also. Via the same process through smart things into hoops. I did find it to work fairly well, but one thing you do want to remember is that you still have to stay within the range of your mini hub. Um, so it might be a little bit more effective if you go with a native home kit product. Um, it really depends on pricing, but uh, I did like this. It has a nice little screen on there. Um, so if you do end up getting one of these, you can definitely bring in this into home kit. Another item that I'm super excited about, um, which I might be using in in my studio if I can get some curtains up here um, is their SwitchBot curtain. Now this is not fully released yet. It originally started on, I think it was Kickstarter or Indiegogo, um, and it's a very unique product for curtains. So um, definitely check out the SwitchBot curtains if you have curtains. I'll leave a link down below we can get more information on that. I sincerely want to thank my Patreon members. I truly appreciate the love and support and how they back me financially. Even though I don't do this channel for financial reasons, I do it more for um, how much I love smart home, how much I love tech, and providing information and value to you guys. And with their support, I can bring more content to you guys. So I truly appreciate them. I will be doing more stuff on Patreon. So if you want to get 
become one of my Patreon members, I'll be leaving a link down below. But it is not necessary. I give all my reviews for free right here on YouTube. If you want to see more of my reviews, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. And if you want to see more hoop videos and how I'm bringing non-native HomeKit products into HomeKit, definitely check out this playlist right there. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one. I'm out. No, nothing can break me.